Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of smart grid data. Uh, so he says it's a uh, it's an augmented version of the electrical grid stability simulated data set um, from UCI. And so basically uh, each smart grid comes along with uh, a stability label, whether it's stable or unstable. And it also has a sort of numerical value representing how stable it is. Uh, so we're going to try to do two different tasks today. One's a uh, classification task, uh, trying to guess if it's stable or unstable. And then also a regression task of trying to predict the actual value of stability uh, for the smart grid. So let's hop into the notebook. Um, this is a very uh, simple task, well, simple notebook. Uh, we're only going to have four imports today. Um, I'm going to use NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. Um, then I'm going to use the train test split function from sklearn. And finally, we're going to use xgboost for both the classifier and the regressor. Uh, so let's go ahead and import those. And then I can load in the data uh, using pandas, uh, pandas.readcsv. Uh, so we just have to specify the CSV file path, which we can get up here, uh, copy file path, uh, and then paste it in, and we'll take a look. And you can see we have 14 columns, 60,000 examples. Um, and at the end, these are our two label columns. Now, when we want, when we uh, pre-process this, we want to make sure that if we're doing a classification task, we want to remove the regression labels because including those would be sort of cheating, right? They both contain similar information. And when we're doing the regression task, we want to remove the classification label column. Uh, so let me just get a little more info about the data set here, uh, just to make sure we don't have any missing values. Okay, yeah, no missing values. Uh, all of them are non-null, because we have 60,000 total entries. And you can see we only have a single object column, and that would be our classification label. So let's uh, start pre-processing. So what I'm gonna do is create a pre-process inputs function. That's going to take in a data frame, and it's gonna return uh, that same data frame. So Actually, let's make a copy of the data frame first, and then we'll return the copy. So let's uh, let's see what this will look like. Let's store the pre-processed version of the data in X, and we can get that with pre-process inputs. And I'm going to pass the unprocessed version in, so data. Then we can look at X. Uh, currently, it should be exactly the same as data because we haven't done any changes yet. Now we can sort of look back and forth at these and include any pre-processing in the function. So uh, I want sort of two different pre-processing schemes uh, depending on which task we're going for. So what I'm going to do in here is include a task variable, which by default, uh, by default we'll have it on classification. But we're going to specify either classification or regression uh, in this task variable and then uh, in the function, depending on what value it has, we'll do different things to the data set. So we'll start off by saying if task equals classification, so the default uh, value, then if it's classification task, we're going to be using this as our label column, and we're going to drop the stability column because we don't want these. These are sort of the answers, right? Because these are a measure, a direct measure of how stable or unstable the data is. So we're going to uh, drop stab df equals df dot drop stab uh, from axis one, which is the column axis, and then we're going to use stab f as the labels. So we'll call y the label column. So y will be df dot uh, df sub stab f, and we'll just make a copy as well. And then x will be the rest of the data, uh, which we know we've already dropped stab from that. Uh, but it will be all the other features that we'll be using to predict stab f. So df uh, dot drop stab f. So everything except stab f. And we'll make a copy of that as well. Okay, and that's uh, that's all we have to do in the case of classification. Now, otherwise, if uh, if the task is regression, which is the other value it could take, then instead of dropping stab, we're going to drop stab f. Because uh, now, if we're doing regression, this is our labels right here, these ones. 
Uh, so we don't need this because this is also giving us sort of a, it's uh, more information, it's sort of, it's sort of cheating because I don't know, you could leave it on. I'm going to drop it. Um, so our Y in this case will be just the stab column. Let's make a copy. And then our X will be everything except the stab column. Uh, let's also make a copy. All right, so now we have two cases. And at the end of either case, we'll have a Y and an X. And now, because this is a very clean data set, there's not much else that has to be done. We have no missing values, and it's all numeric. Uh, and addi in addition to that, it's actually already scaled. Um, I tried out using different scalers with it, and uh, in nothing it, it did not improve the performance. So we can assume that these are already scaled. We can actually take a look at that. Um, if we return x here, instead of df, then we can look, here's x, this is just our feature data, so the, the labels have been safely stored in y. Um, but so I want to look at the means of each column. Um, and they're, so they're not all identical, but they, they seem to be in groups. All the tau's have the same mean, all the g's have the same mean, all the p's, well, not all of them, this one is the only one that uh, varies. But I found that this, uh, this seems to have uh, good performance, no need to scale the data here, uh, especially, um, well, I tried using a, both a min-max scaler and a standard scaler, and there was no performance increase. Uh, let's look at the variance as well. Yeah, it looks like within the groups, they have very similar variances. The only one that seems to be differing is P1. So I'm not sure exactly what these features are. Oh, actually, it says it here. Um, so P1 is energy producer. Oh, I see. So this is the, the producer's energy uh, power balance, and these are the power balances of consumers. So there's a difference there. All right, so um, I'm not going to worry about scaling, um, but I do want to do a train test split. So we're going to take our X and Y and split it so that 70% of the data goes into the train set, and the other 30% goes into the test set. And for this, we can use the train test split function from sklearn, taking an X and Y and a train size of our choosing. Like I said, 70%. Uh, and then this is on by default, but I'm specifying anyway. Shuffle equals true. Uh, we'll shuffle our data before we do the split. And because there's uh, an element of randomness there, um, I'd like to include a random state. Uh, this can be any number. It's just going to ensure that the split, well, the shuffle, and therefore the split will always be done in the same way. And then this will return four new sets of the data, which will be x train, x test, y train, and y test. And then that's what I want to return, these four values. Okay, so now what we have is a uh, pre-processing function that allows us to return either uh, train and test sets for a classification task or the train and test sets for a regression task. So let's, uh, let's do this. We'll say classification task. And we're going to get the values, which are actually going to be these now, right? Not just X we're getting, but all four. And we want to include the task here as classification. And now here's X train. And then if we look at Y train, you can see we have the classification labels. And our regression, uh, our regression column is gone. The regression labels are not here. Then we'll have the regression task, uh, which will take the same line here, except we'll change the task to regression. Uh, now if we look at X train, uh, it should be exactly the same as this X train. But if we look at Y train, you can see we just have the regression labels instead of the classification labels. And so now let's build the models. So, uh, yeah, so let's create two models. Uh, like I said, they'll both be from XGBoost. So here we'll be using the XGB classifier. Let's call it CLF for classifier. That'll be an XGB classifier. And we'll fit it to the train set. So X train, Y train. Now, because I'm using the same names here, we have to make sure we do it in the right order uh, and make sure that these, this is actually referencing 
uh, these ones instead of these ones. Okay, so um, down here, we're going to create a reg model, it's a regressor model, or regression model, using the XGB regressor. Actually, I'll just call it reg, since the other one is just CLF. And then we're going to fit reg to um, the train set as well. This time we'll be passing in the Y train uh, from our regression task. And I'll just include a print statement that says uh, regressor trained. And up here we'll do classifier trained. All right, uh, and after they train, I'm just going to print out the results. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we can just print. Uh, here, since it's a classifier, uh, the model.score function, or clf.score, will return an accuracy value. So I'll print classification test accuracy. And I want to display it to two decimal places and as a percent, so percent sign, and then format, uh, and I'm doing clf.score on the test set, x test, y test. And since we are doing a percent, I'm going to multiply that by 100. And then similar down here, we'll print out, this time it's a regression task, and it's not accuracy. Uh, by default, the score uh, function returns uh, the R squared value, R squared score. Uh, so this is a measure of how dispersed the data is from our fit. It's sort of an overall measure of how well a regression task uh, has been performed. This is not a percent, um, although it does take a value between well, uh, maxed out at one. And we'll display this to five decimal places. And instead of clf.score, it will be reg.score. And we're not multiplying this by 100. Okay, so let's run this. Uh, let's create a train test set uh, for our classification task. You can see that our Y train is the classification labels. Let's train the classifier. Uh, and once it's been trained, let's print out the value. So we're getting very good results and 98% cla classification test accuracy. And then for our regression task, we'll load up this train test set. And you'll note that the Y train now is uh, numerical labels. And we'll train the regressor. And when that's done, we'll print out the R squared score. And you can see we have 0.95. So these aren't exactly the same metric so it's not exactly fair to compare these together. We can't say the classification task was better uh, because this is accuracy and this is R squared. But it, we can say that both models are doing a pretty good job uh, at the task, at their respective tasks. Um, so uh, that will be all for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.